It does not have to be a new year, a new you. It just has to be a healthier you in the new year, you guys. Make sure you check down below in the description box where you can find the links to TLC products, including the IASOT, the Nutriverse, the Life Drops, the Resolution Drops. There's just so many things there to help you in burning fat and staying healthy. There's even the new immune tea, which I'm going to order. So I can't wait to like, you know, try that. And I hope they get the sea moss back. But I do love the sea moss from Men and Ocean. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a commercial. Yes, okay? Get those TLC products for me. And do not forget that my biggest life change has been through Kiara Lachey, Team Lachey, If You Can Move.com. You guys get cute little outfits from Paige and Amari. You also check out Just Move Supplements because she is helping us with the energy. Okay, this is the energy supplement. Love it. Okay, just got my protein. Gonna get me some after I work out. So, yeah, y'all. Down below in the description box, support, support, support. So you guys are always asking me where I get my glasses from. So I thought I would finally give y'all a real little ad, okay? Firmo, I can't see, bitch. Okay, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. These are my new Firmo glasses here. Super, super cute, right? They are prescription because I'm like totally blind. And I got these matte ones that I think are really dope. And I felt like they would go good with the fact that I no longer have hair. You know what I'm saying? But either way, you guys can use my link and give me credit and get you some glasses from Fermo. Come on in, come on in, come on in, not come on in, not come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead. Hey, everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram and let's get into the video. Lord, Lord. <laughs> Y'all, welcome to another episode of the Bondi Blue Show, bitch. Okay. Um, and check this out. If you thought that this video was only about Portia, it's not. Sorry. I don't have time for that to just be doing videos about one person. But I am glad that all of y'all are here. Okay. I'm glad that everybody has come to see me today. All right. We got to talk about a few things before we get into Portia, but we're going to get into Portia. In all honesty, I'm scared to talk about it because I feel like every couple of minutes, every hour, something else is, is on the internet, whether it's somebody's response to Portia or it's Portia tweeting people, you know, but we're going to break it all, all the way down because I have had my ear to these streets and I know, okay, but I do want to talk about a few things before we get in to the Porsche situation. Okay. So let's, let's start here. Okay. Let's start with Jaleel White. Y'all, I actually just finished watching the uncensored with Jaleel White and it was really, really good. Okay. It was good. He gives off a really amazing energy. Like I would love to hang with him. <laughs> like, like I would definitely kick it with Jaleel White. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we, we would definitely kick it. And I had a uh, respect for Family Matters. It's one of my favorite shows growing up. So, you know, cause I know a lot of black folk don't really be feeling the Family Matters because it was written by white people, but I still enjoyed that good show. Okay. So he is on the blogs right now because in 2018, y'all know Bill Cosby was sentenced to three, uh, to three to 10. OK, in prison for being convicted of drugging and sexually assaulting women. OK, one woman, specifically Andrea Constan, at his home back in Ofo. Dozens of women also came forward with sexual assault claims against the actor. Jaleel White first met Cosby when he was being considered for the role as the youngest child on the Cosby show. That part ultimately went to Keisha Knight Pulliam after Bill Cosby pushed for his character to have another daughter instead of a son. Jaleel White, who went on to star in Family, Matter in Family Matters, recalled, he said, I fostered a relationship with Mr. Cosby separate and apart. Many dinners at his house, breakfast. I even ran into a rough patch and he's directly responsible for why I ended up at William Morris Agency, which became an education onto itself. He spoke on the claims against Cosby and he said, you go back in time and you realize how close you were to something and you put yourself in rooms where you realize his wife wasn't there. 
That woman was probably there for that purpose. You know, it's it's a hell of a hindsight thing to look at. While he revealed he and Cosby are no longer friends, he didn't explain why. Instead, he said it was like a revered man did a terrible thing and he's paying the price. It's just like I think I think that's where we leave it. A revered man did a terrible thing and he is paying the appropriate price and i wanted to talk about it also because i wanted y'all to check out his um uncensored because it was good and he does give off some energy y'all like it, it it definitely feels stefan or kellish okay you know people be trying to play him like you know but i'm just saying okay the young man the, you know the, the young man gives off energy to me okay i'm just saying but anyway it was interesting to me because I think people who had a relationship with Bill Cosby either stay silent, back him up with some type of like angst, like you're mad at people for being affected by what he's in jail for. You know what I'm saying? Like I even saw somebody try to read Felicia Rashad down for being supportive of Bill Cosby during all of this. And I just wanted to say that that was Felicia Rashad's experience of Bill Cosby. He definitely showed up as a different person for her than he did for all of those women that he did that shit to. People know who to take advantage of. So I definitely feel like her experience with him was her experience with him. But so often people have her response, you know, or the response of free Bill Cosby or, you know, they just be real lackadaisical about somebody being a fucking rapist. And I'm just, you know, bothered by that. But that just goes to show how when people do things to women, it's not as bad for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? But either way, his response was so adequate to me. Like, he did a terrible thing and he's where he's supposed to be for what he did. I appreciated that sentiment so much because a lot of people don't feel that way. And a lot of people don't say that because of friendships with Bill Cosby. They act like the shit was all good, you know, but it wasn't. But shout out to Jaleel White because he has been in the news a lot lately. Y'all know I've already talked about him because he did talk about in this uncensored about how the adults in Family Matters really hated on him. OK, and we talking about the mama and the daddy. We talking about uh, Joyce and we talking about Reginald. OK, for one, they were mad because they were sold Family Matters as if it would be their show. And it really wasn't. And you had Tamala. uh Hopkins, uh, Hopkins, I think that's her name. But anyway, then on top of that, when he played uh, Myra, uh, was that her name? Y'all know the female character he played that he was that was his cousin. He talked about how when he played that character, how they really expressed to him how he was doing black people a disservice by being a young black boy, you know, in a dress. And his dad had to come to set and like tell everybody, hey. I understand that y'all have y'all feelings about this, but this is a child and y'all gonna stop putting the weight of the whole black community on his fucking shoulders, okay? But I, I appreciated the, the telling of that because I feel like it's so important for people to recognize what they be doing to kids sometimes when they put these like ridiculous things on them as if putting a dress on somehow is affecting a, a person's manhood when is it really? Because to me, a, a person's manhood is measured by what they do as a man. You have children, you take care of your children. You are a man, you take care of yourself and your responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like there are so many men out here that are toxic and are, you know, totally not going to be caught, you know, in a dress or being OK with somebody being caught in a dress. And they still don't show up as real men. They still don't um, add to their communities in a positive way to their kids, to their families in a positive way. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the clothes they have on. So I just want to reference how y'all be worrying about the wrong shit. OK, let's move on to Tierra Marie, because I thought this was interesting. OK, Tierra Marie, you guys will allegedly be on the upcoming season of Marriage Boot Camp. And I'm like, bitch, for what? For what? Child, because Love and Hip Hop ain't doing nothing right now. That's why. That's for what? Because we not taping right now? Oh, that's why. Child, I have not heard about them taping in Hollywood. We'll see. But anyway, it seems that songstress, Tiara Marie, are we still calling her that? I love you, Tiara, but when was the last time you was a songstress, bitch? I don't remember. Anyway, she will be making her way back to reality TV soon as she 
allegedly joins the new cast of Marriage Boot Camp for season 18. Marriage Boot Camp initially premiered in 2013. The show typically follows celebrities as they set out to fix their relationships. As you guys know, I review Marriage Boot Camp. So if she is on there, I will be, you know, I review it anyway, you know, especially the hip hop edition. Um, you know, I prefer that one because sometimes they just be getting you know, into the houses and things be a little, you know, tense, 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 racial tension. I don't really like it all the time. Be racial sometimes. So I really like the hip hop edition. Um, it's unclear who Tia Marie will probably bring on the show with her. However, we're told that it will more than likely be one of her exes as pre. Oh, girl, if you come on this motherfucking show with Akbar, I'm going to be real upset. OK, child, I don't know who she going to see. That's a problem to me. And then they, why are they going to put uh, Ray J and Cisco up here? Child, Ray J got too much time on his hands dealing with Prinky. OK, how many reality shows they going to go on together? But I just kind of felt like it was interesting that she was going to be on another reality show. And then you're going to get on a reality show with a man and we ain't seeing you with no man. How you going to be on a reality show that's about marriage? You ain't got no girl. Where's the man? Where? I see you look good. You know, I'm, I'm actually mad that they posted that picture of you on a Jasmine brand. And I didn't think to go to your Instagram and get that recent picture of you looking real cute, looking real Beyonce ish. Um, you know, the picture did kind of look like Beyonce. I feel like when I saw it, but either way, I just kind of feel like Sierra Marie, Sierra Marie, a, a, a reality show marriage boot camp. We, we don't see a man. Oh, but I will be I will be on the lookout for sure. Um, funny story. Funny story before we get to a sad story. Um, well, not a sad story, it's actually good, but it's still, you know, puts us in a dog place. Y'all, Dave Chappelle and Idris Elba know each other. Apparently, you guys, <laughs> and this made me laugh. I'm sorry. Dave Chappelle is putting Idris Elba's alleged past on blast, okay? But I feel like K. Michelle already told us that Idris Elba was a hood nigga. We already knew this, okay? But this past Saturday, Dave Chappelle appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience to dish on a variety of different topics. During this three-hour podcast appearance, the comedian addressed the importance of treating service workers with politeness and kindness. Dave Chappelle claimed that this was so important because people have no idea how others' lives will turn out one day. He proceeded to mention Luther actor Idris Elba as an example. Allegedly, Idris Elba used to be a bouncer at a well-known comedy club in New York and sold Chappelle some weed while working his gig, Chappelle claimed. Okay, Idris Elba, the famous actor, used to be a security guard at Caroline's. I used to buy weed from him. <laughs> oh, God damn. While Dave Chappelle might have put Idris Elba uh, pass on blast a bit, it seemed as though he provided a solid example of why it's important to treat service people kindly. You never know where they'll end up. OK, Elba may have allegedly sold cannabis to Chappelle in the past, but it's safe to say that he doesn't have to sell weed anymore with his resume. OK, y'all, the hilarity of that, the hilarity of that. I was like, am I the only one that thought that <clears throat> that shit was hilarious to me? OK, th that. <laughs> Hey, okay, I'm coming back into the chat because I was on the page reading. Hey, Ebony, been waiting on this live uh, to tell you my one-year-old lights up when he sees your face and hears your voice. It's super cute, ready for the Porsche read. Thank you, Ebony. We gonna get to it. That's why I'm y'all are not late. Listen, I wanted to make sure that I did Porsche last so that everybody could get here, okay? So we're going through, we have uh, three more topics to get through before we get to Portia as to give everybody a chance to get settled in and get here so y'all not coming in in the middle of the video and I'm going off and y'all like, am I late, bitch? No, you're not. We haven't even gotten to Portia yet. <laughs> relax, relax, relax. Um, see, Ronnie, thank you for the super chat. Same thing happened to Brandy when Thea was mistreating her and that's why Sonya turned into the B she was as a manager, Okay. Thank you, T. Ronnie, for that reference. OK, for sure. I always feel like you should be treating people with respect in um, in any situation, specifically in service industry. Thank you, Crystal, um, for the super chat. And, and that's because people will do shit to your food and your drinks and they'll give you subpar service and they'll be an asshole to you and use their little position of power over you if you treat them like shit. Um, I'm a good tipper. Like I'm one of those people. So. I just thought that was funny because <laughs> I was like, child, if I'd have met Idris Elba at Caroline's as a, as a security guard that also had weed on him, child. I'm just going to move on to the next topic. <laughs> I'm just going to move on to the next topic. Okay. As to not get perverse. 
Um, yeah, let's talk about Brianna Taylor for a second, okay? So, y'all know I don't usually like to talk about sad things, but I felt like we needed to discuss this just to, you know, put it out there. On March 13th, 2023, Louisville Metropolitan Police Officers murdered Brianna Taylor while serving a warrant for her ex-boyfriend, Jamarcus Glover. Shots were fired in response to Brianna Taylor's partner, Kenneth Walker, shooting at who he assumed were intruders. As he alleged that the officers did not announce themselves, resulting the officers fired 32 shots into the apartment, killing Brianna. Brianna Taylor's death sparked national outrage and resulted in calls for police defunding and abolishment. Adding fuel to the fire, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron chose to not charge the officers for their roles in the fatal shooting, suggesting that the officers were justified in their decision regarding the incident. However, Findings from an internal probe were recently released, and it turns out that the investigation came to a very different conclusion. Oh, you mean a common sense conclusion? You mean one that made sense? You mean one that would have been given automatically if the person murdered in her apartment were a white woman? Oh, okay. Sergeant Andrew Myers of the department's professional standards unit actually determined that the three officers did not act accordingly and should have held their fire, Andrew Myers wrote. They took a total of 32 shots when the provided circumstances made it unsafe to take a single shot. This is how the wrong person was shot and killed, he continued. Miss Taylor's safety should have been considered before the officers returned fire. Andrew Myers' conclusions were largely based on the fact that the officers, Jonathan Mattingly, Brett Hankinson, and Miles Cosgrove, were literally shooting into the dark and were unable to properly assess the threat. Resultingly, their use of force was unauthorized and Myers recommended that all three officers face disciplinary action for violating the department's policy. Yeah, that's right. Not our policy, not the world, not the media, the department's policy. All of Myers findings were corroborated by Lieutenant Jeff Artman. However, former Louisville Police Chief Yvette Gentry chose to overrule Myers' recommendation. Only two of the officers, Brett Hankinson and Miles Cosgrove, were fired for violating departmental policy. Jonathan Mattingly, on the other hand, is still employed with the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department and actually wrote a book on the incident before he retires on June 1st. None of the officers have been charged with Breonna Taylor's death. Also, oh, he got a book deal. I, oh, you know, he lost that book deal with Simon and Schuster, if I uh, recall. But anyway, while there have been heavy disagreement over how the case has been handled, the internal investigation's findings indicate that Kentucky law enforcement officials have based their actions on information that contradicts the probe's conclusions. We all know what's going on here. We all know what's going on here. The police unions do not want people to be held responsible. Y'all don't want people to actually have to face consequences for murdering black people because you are a system set up to murder black people. You're also a system that is set up to put people in cages so that y'all can make money off them. And that goes all the way down to police departments that act like the war on drugs is a real thing while they're snorting cocaine that they got from the evidence locker so that they can get more money pumped into their systems because otherwise, what are we paying Mayberry for exactly? What the fuck is he doing? Most of those police officers, if, it, if, they, if they don't live in major cities, they are there doing nothing normal, normally. So they're not getting paid a lot of money and they feel like they should be getting paid more. So what do they do? They make it seem, I feel like they overly arrest people. They overly police people so that they can have the government see, oh, look at all the crime going on. We need more money. And then you put more money into the police departments and they get paid more and they get pensions and they get to live while traumatizing and continuously abusing the black community in which they work in. So yeah, we need to work on that, you guys. It's, it's increasingly more upsetting. So let's talk about Wendy Williams for a second, okay? Apparently, Wendy Williams had a boyfriend that I didn't know about because I, in general, don't really care about what Wendy's doing with her life because, you know... <clears throat> She gives great garden teas. Um, so TV host and personality Wendy Williams is back on the market. She began dating Mike Esterman, who also happens to be a friend of TV personality Mario Lopez. Back in March of this year, Mike Esterman caught her attention during a, a dating segment of Wendy Williams' show. Oh, really? 
from there, they began dating. Oh, wow. I had no idea. I haven't been watching Wendy lately. Mm. Wendy Williams shared photos with the public of her and Mike Easterman snuggled up together. Wendy previously had this to say about their budding relationship. Mike and I are having fun. I'm glad he's a real gentleman. I put Randy Jackson, Birdman, and Mario Lopez try to, uh, okay, but, I'm sorry, but Randy Jackson, Birdman, and Mario Lopez try to block my collards, fried chicken, shrimps, yams, beans, soul roll, mac and cheese, fish, rice, oxtail, and my carrot cake. We will discuss once I gather myself. Oh, okay. Child, I don't know what any of that means. On Wendy's show, she explained to the public why she selected contractor Mike Esterman to be her boyfriend after a very public breakup with ex-husband Kevin Hunter, who we saw at the versus battle. Apparently, he's working with Tamika. Hmm. She said, I chose you because I'm not a multiple boyfriend person. I want to settle down one day. Child, one day. Like, why is she saying it like she ain't just finish settling down child whatever whatever the situation calls for but she says we are age appropriate i like your shirt and you got jokes okay i guess is that i mean that's why y'all breaking up now because you based this relationship off the fact that he was an old white man with a nice shirt and a couple of good jokes bitch that's sad okay um according to page six wendy and mike have already called the relationship quits and mike said monday she deserves to be with someone who may have more time he added we were never an item after three dates i had placed all work related tasks aside um to get to know her on a personal level no angles or hidden agendas i can only wish her the best as we both continue to search at our own paces and remain friends in the process okay um yeah this sounds like shit went downhill fast okay i don't know why they broke up maybe it's because wendy is so used to having a man running up behind her she low-key wanted him you know to be a kevin and he's not a kevin i don't know maybe they really didn't have sexual chemistry because liking a nigga shirt don't mean you're gonna be into his sexual chemistry okay i'm just saying but i'm glad to see that wendy is out here getting dick because <laughs> i think she need it okay i think she need the d for sure so I'm glad she out here getting it. Um, Y'all like the video. This is the second to last topic before we, you know, get into the whole Porsche situation. Y'all make sure y'all support my channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And, you know, they're like, what, almost 1,500 of y'all in here. Would y'all please, like, like my video? <laughs> Don't stalk me. Okay, you want to come and hear me talk about something, tell YouTube you like me, like my video. Okay, y'all, let's get into a little Dirk. And I want to talk about this because I felt like this is just a good topic all the way around because something is wrong with you young girls. OK, or well, something is wrong with you bitches, period. Um, we all have our issues. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I am. Um, but one thing I have always believed is that you should be rather choosy about who you have children with. And I think so many of you young women are not choosy about who you have children with. And then you end up like Masika on Mother's Day weekend crying about how a nigga ain't never gave you nothing. Well, I don't know why you had a baby with that nigga because he wasn't doing nothing for the children he had before yours. Um, you know, why do you think he's gonna do something for you or be something for you that he hasn't been able to be for anybody before you and you still on here crying about it, bitch? Collect your child support and take care of your baby, but stop looking for people to pat you on the back for getting pregnant by a fuck nigga. Like you decided to do that after the evidence was already presented. Anyway, rapper Lil Dirk, okay, his girlfriend, the young lady, picture here into your royale i don't know the little girl okay but she's trending on social media after addressing comments about being little dirk's sixth baby mama in the tweet she said y'all can't make me mad about being a six bm i knew i was gonna be that when i chose parenthood over planned parenthood i'm the bm the obsession lover friend authorized user on bank cards and beneficiary talk to me nice bitches oh you the beneficiary bitch oh he signed some paperwork to make you a beneficiary bitch a word i think it's a lie <laughs> I think it's a lie. I think it's a fraud. She says he will get on here and tell y'all. Y'all know he live in the pocket of my pussy. Oh, for the moment, bitch. For the moment. Okay, Pisces be so strong in their delusions. She's so cute. <laughs> Since posting that tweet, India Royale's Twitter account has been deactivated. An old India Royale tweet uh, was resurfaced. I'm sorry. Um, I refuse to be a nigga down BM shoot me it's less painful 
I won't still be around after he had five girlfriends and five kids later. Nope, I won't still be. That, that's what she said. That's what she said a long time ago, y'all. I guess I guess the dick made her change her mind. Maybe it was the money. Maybe it was a celebrity. Maybe it's she, you know, feeling like people give a fuck about her enough for her to be trending just because she got pregnant by some, you know, dirty looking dude. Anyway, Chicago native Lil Durk and Instagram model India Royale are currently in a relationship and have been romantically linked since 2017 after his split from rapper Dej Loaf in 2016. Child is Dej Lo coming out as the lesbian she really is or are we still playing around? Never mind. The backdoor rapper in India Royale welcomed their first child together a daughter named Willow in October 2018. It was once rumored the couple was engaged after Lil Durk shared a photo of a ring accompanied with the photo of him kissing his on again, off again girlfriend. In the past, he's denied rumors of a breakup. He's been quoted saying, save the bullshit. We ain't never breaking up. Oh, that's cute. That's so cute. They not gonna ever break up. Is he going to be faithful? <laughs> okay. Is he really for you? Okay. Y'all been together for a minute, but I just kind of feel like women are so quick to want position with men when nobody's wife in you stop accepting, you know, the girlfriend title, you know, with these little wife perks that you're not really getting. I'm just saying, slow your roll, young girl. OK, so your role, young girl. And I also don't think anybody should be trying to be a nigga six baby mama. What's wrong with y'all? What's wrong with y'all? I just want y'all to understand that everybody, you know, grows, but you do not need to have that mindset at 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. You never need to have the mindset that I'm OK with being the six baby mama because, oh, he put me on the paperwork. Beneficiary. Bitch, is you a wife or an aunt? Because a lot of y'all like the Yandias. Y'all call yourselves wives. Y'all say a nigga, y'all husband. But there's no paperwork. But there's no paperwork. So when it all brawls down, he can just pick up his shit or throw your shit outside. And then that's just the end of the thing. OK. And when it all, it all falls down. OK, listen. A mess. But that's y'all young girls. I'm going to just tell y'all be more choosy about who y'all have kids with. Yeah, these niggas are fucked up. But y'all know these niggas fucked up and y'all still have kids for them. I'm still going back to Masika. Okay, Masika was real mad. It was a couple of y'all, you know, even uh, uh, Brittany, uh, Bianca, not Brittany, Bianca from uh, Love and Hip Hop. Y'all remember her had the baby by the boy with the blue hair. They was on marriage boot camp together. He was, you know, with the little white girl. That's who he really wanted to be with. But for some reason, he keeps coming back and fucking Bianca. He gets Bianca pregnant. Bianca has a baby, beautiful little baby. Of course, he's not there for the baby, bitch. He wasn't really trying to be with you when y'all was on marriage boot camp and you let yourself get pregnant. And I say you let yourself get pregnant because it's your pussy. Yes, he's a man. If he didn't want a child with you, he should have put a condom on while having sex with you. But bitch, you got to walk around with your pussy every day. That's yours. You carrying that around. So now you're a mother and you want to complain about a nigga not being what he's supposed to be for you. Well, he already told you that's what it was going to be by the way he treated you from the very beginning before you even had a baby. That's why I don't understand. Why do people want to have babies for niggas that don't ever really be there for them in the first place? Make me understand because I don't get it. But y'all, we're going to go ahead and move on to the main attraction. OK, I made y'all wait 30 minutes, bitch. Let's go ahead and get into it. OK, first of all, Portia left the son and went to the daddy. <laughs> OK, OK, because that's what this shit looked like. Did that nigga look like Dennis's daddy? OK, how what Meg said? Meg, Meg got a fire ass line about, you know, I'm trying to get you. Nigga ain't worrying about you I'm trying to fuck your peppy. OK, listen. All right, listen, I don't understand, though, y'all. Let's look at this for a second. First of all, we knew something was wrong. And I mentioned it. Y'all, if y'all watched my Real Housewives of Atlanta live yesterday, we had a really great time. We talked about the verses and then we got into Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion, which wasn't really much of nothing. But I did mention this picture and that it looked suspect. And I didn't know what was going on. OK, last night. The tea was spilled all over the kitchen floor while we were doing uh, Scotty's panel. Right. And I was able to, you know, give y'all a little rendition of what Portia posted last night that confirmed the situation. Portia. 
said on her Instagram. Are we ready? We ready? Our relationship began a month ago. Yes, we are crazy in love. I know it's fast, but we are living life each day to its fullest. I chose happiness every morning and every night. Tuning out all negative energy and only focused on positive wishes. He makes me so happy. And to me, that is what matters most. For all of you that need facts, I get the optics. But Simon filed for divorce from a previous marriage in January. I had nothing to do with their divorce filing. That's between the two of them. Fallon and I are not friends and Simon's divorce has been settled. Our relationship is a positive, loving step forward in everybody's lives. Simon and Dennis are committed to being respectful and supportive of my happiness in this situation, as well as being the best co-parents they can be to baby PJ. Two black men stepping up and being amazing people. Let's praise them. It's truly a beautiful moment in my life, and we cannot wait to spend the rest of our lives together. XOXOP, hashtag love wins, okay? Now, Portia announced the news on social media, okay? Your boy Simon came up right behind her, okay? And he said, I'd like to seize this opportunity to thank every well-wisher of Portia and I, whether via phone, text, or DM. You affirm my belief that finding love is possible for everyone who genuinely seeks one. Getting married again was never a question in my mind. I mean, you not even over being married all the way, nigga. That's why it wasn't a question in your mind because you're still married to the last bitch. Yeah, you may have settled it, but the, the divorce is not finalized. So of course you weren't thinking about marrying somebody else. The fuck? Sorry, y'all. Did not expect to be blessed with a mate so soon. The interesting thing about life is that it is an individual journey, which means... What's good for us may not be good for y'all, but we're going to do what the fuck we won't do. That's what that individual journey shit means. Portia and I, with the support of our loved ones, have chosen to travel together as one and spread love and positivity to our community, which is in desperate need of positive and healthy images of the best versions of ourselves. Right. Because fucking your man's friend and then getting engaged to him before his marriage is finalized to a woman you called a friend, whether for fake or for real, for play play or for real, you went to that lady house. You played around in that lady pool, okay? And now you are engaged to that lady's husband. Yeah, I don't know if that's a positive image that we need in our community, but I'm not gonna judge y'all yet. OK, we travel this road not lightly, considering we have been in relationships that have thought us to want wait, have brought us to want to do better for ourselves. I asked her to marry me because we checked all of each other's boxes. She has a big ass and a nice smile. I have a sizable penis belly and wallet. That's probably what that means. We have done the individual work to sustain a healthy relationship. It's only been a month. So y'all say, how have y'all done sustainable work in, in a month in which one relationship is not even 100 percent done? Make that make sense. Y'all sound full of shit. OK, he says, I stand next to her proud that we found each other. What we have is what we wish every single one of you out there. Happiness, happiness. OK, I'm like, all right. You know, I won't be happy too, but mm, I don't know if I won't be happy like this. At least not like this. This is ooh. So when I asked, she said yes. That is all that mattered. Thank you again for love and support. Truly appreciate it. Hashtag love wins. I love how y'all didn't take in something that the gay folks was using. <laughs> okay. And now y'all won't put it on y'all bullshit talking about love wins. Get the fuck out of here. Simon and his estranged wife, Fallon, announced their split after two years of marriage last month. In an Instagram story post shared on April 22nd, Fallon wrote that the mutual decision was not made lightly. OK, we're all using the same words. Just pointing that out. And she and Simon are deeply thankful for the impact we have made in each other's lives, as well as, excuse me, the bonds formed with each other's children. The divorce was not yet finalized, but the 
Gubadias, uh, Guobadias, I don't know how to pronounce it, have reached a settlement agreement, okay? Portia was previously engaged to her ex, Dennis McKinley, with whom she split from shortly after giving birth to now two-year-old daughter, Pilar Jenna. I mean, as many times as they went back and forth, I am flabbergasted that Dennis and his knees are standing here smiling like a fucking goofball with her hand on his daddy's nipple. On Mother's Day, Portia sparked engagement rumors when she posted this picture. Okay? We were all like, what the fuck is this? And child, now we know. <laughs> child, now we know. Come on, bitch. <laughs> I mean, clicking for a second. Now we know, y'all. This is what it is. Portia got a new man, a new haircut. And a new ring, but the same cut. All right. I cannot with Portia. Girl, this is whole antics if I've ever seen them. And listen, I won't go as far as when Portia calls you a free coal and a slut and all of that. Because I don't like that type of language. Okay. that That's not the preferred language that I, I, I like to, you know, I don't like to use that type of language because I don't like when people put everything on women. This old dirty ass, nasty ass old man, okay, who is about to give her the worms if he has not already because people are even, you know, speculating that she may be pregnant. I cannot. Cajun Peach, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Bondi. Um, no, I have not seen that. Um, I'll have to check it out. I appreciate you. Um, Deanna, uh, Deanna Williams, I'm waiting for the pregnancy announcement. Thank you so much for the super chat. Aren't we all? She was flopping around in that lady pool, testing it out for when she moves in. Their timeline doesn't even add up. Thank you, Yasmin Wilson, for the super chat. I'm not going to say that their timeline doesn't add up, but what I'm going to say is regardless to the timeline, this shit is fucked up. <laughs> this shit is messy. But I would just like to say thank you so much to Portia and Dennis for the check. Okay, because this this, this video has 2,000 people in it. So thank you, Portia and, 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 and uh, Simon. I'm sorry, not Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, daddy, Simon. I'm sorry. Thank you, Grandpa Simon and Portia for the check. Okay, and, and thank you so much because Real Housewives of Atlanta, if she is still on the show next season, is going to give. Okay, it is going to give. Um, we can definitely mark the month of may off as the month that portia broke the internet okay we can go ahead and give that to her all right along with all you know the previous see that these are the previous situations that we didn't see <laughs> okay all right we had january february march april and now we are in may and portia has broke it the internet okay i'm gonna read y'all a little bit more of this little extra tea we got floating around the internet before y'all go okay now somebody sent me this from the grace report i don't know who this white lady is but she says she got an anonymous dm that this girl was reportedly dating simon in early april and was i mean well that's a month bitch that's that's the timeline that they gave but she was in uh his ferrari etc and they are no longer following each other talking about uh her and they no longer follow each other i guess she was talking about your girl in Portia, Fallon in Portia. Simon is messy. Yes, he is. He's very messy. And somebody said that's his jacket on her lap. And Portia was like, who's lap? Bitch, you know what we mean, bitch. That's his tight ass jacket in, in the passenger seat. Uh, 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 yo core. Okay. Something along those lines. And then whoever this Jessica girl is, they say Jessica dropped a subliminal song accusing Simon of faking his wealth and telling people not to fall for it. By the way, maybe he was already dating this Jessica chick and was cheating on her with Portia. Child, we don't even know. Todd had something to say and it didn't really make much sense to me. So I'm definitely going to come back to the comments in a minute so I can see what you guys are saying about this. But Ty said, he posted this. I want no pause in being popular. See me with people who are at peace and paid. Okay. And then Ty said, I guess that shit is too late and don't be popular and broke as fuck. Cause you'll find yourself doing something strange for a piece of change. And I'm wondering who was this 
geared towards and marlo um all these hundreds that you putting in the comment section bitch all these hundreds that you putting in the comment section when we have already surmised the strange that you were able to do for your change come on girl let's not let's not <laughs> okay she said it's the audacity for me now that one i will agree with marlo it is definitely um audacious of portia to be this messy nene leak said that reading is fundamental i posted a comment and didn't really read i just saw love and relationship then posted you have to keep it real as a friend it looks strange but i don't know any details okay and portia then went about responding to folks okay she said uh uh say psych right now so she said y'all please i can't breathe I, it's funny mm. i hope portia wedding is going to be on rival because i need to see this beautiful queen in a wedding gown child y'all staying way too fucking hard now that will set this freaking haters uh now that will set these freaking haters off because i know nobody will fill out a gown like portia i do i mean listen it's not a lie it's not a lie. Like I would love to see it all. Um, Real Housewives of Atlanta with a Portia, you know, getting married to Dennis, all of the mess. Kenya reading her fulfilled every single day. Child, I, I would live. I, it would be a wonderful season to make up for the trash they gave us this past season. Um, but she said it's a lie about that being uh that man ring. She said it's not that man, uh, that's not failing ring. Don't say that. That's not true. Okay um it was another one somewhere that i thought i saw um oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah contessa posted this from married to medicine reevaluating all my friendships i said you was friends with portia bitch when that happened um but this is from january when uh because it's gossip in the city shout out to gossip in the city um for bringing us back to just january when simon was talking about fallon his soulmate and that she was his best friend and she takes his shit just as much as he take hers they love each other intensely they agree more than they disagree apparently not apparently they were culturally yoked apparently not um we seek growth on a continuous basis that growth must mean different people um, we're far from being perfect, bitch. That is the only lie that was not told, okay? Uh, <laughs> baby, this shit is mess e girl. Mess e girl. Oh my god. Um, and this was Fallon on the Jasmine brand recently talking about the situation. Y'all said that um, you know, Portia is the type of person you can't bring around your man. And I'm just kind of like, I guess. I mean, to me, I feel like if your nigga can be took, then that's really on you and your nigga more so than a girl who took him. Um, to me, it just seemed like their relationship probably was already on its outs to me. Um, but Kenya said, you know, Kenya posted this when the announcement came out, you know, they never can say it. They never can say it. <laughs> you know, Nikki is life. Um, but yeah. I still feel like, Ken, you never said this. You never said this. You never put this out there. If you would have put this out there, bitch, we'd have been having a different conversation. But you never said this. You never brought this up. Child, this is all just a hot ass mess. I cannot believe, Portia. I cannot believe that you actually announced it. Like, to me, that even makes even more so her energy at the reunion of, you know, whatever, bitch. Whatever, bitch. Y'all gonna talk about me and guess what, bitch? I don't even give a fuck because I'm with this rich ass old man and I'm getting all that money and bitch, I'm gonna be good and my life gonna be great and I'm gonna be on this show and y'all gonna be talking about me and I'm still gonna be looking good and I'm still gonna be like, oh my God, Portia, Portia, Portia. <laughs> and that's basically what it is, bitch. We still Portia, Portia, Portia. Timeline, January divorce, according to P. February, Simon posted how in love he was with Fallon. Late March, Fallon said they were working it out. Late April, divorce announced Portia with Simon. What? Thank you for the super chat, Yasmin. Girl, thank you. Listen, let me go back through these super chats. I don't know what Todd was trying to say, but Todd was saying a lot. California Cutie, thank you for the super chat. Just sending love. I really enjoy your channel. Thank you so much. Uh, Tim Hardy, thank you for the super chat. Been a member since 2014. I appreciate y'all coming through and showing love with the super chat. I really do. Finally caught a live. I'm at work with the door closed. Couldn't wait for this child. This is just so messy. Thank you, Tiara. It is. 
It is so messy. Thank you, Quasha. We'll be standing on uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. We'll be standing on Real Housewives be affected by this news. I just don't see the rest of the cast being comfortable filming with her after this. They'll probably have to keep their distance until this whole thing blows over. Um, here's the thing. Real Housewives of Atlanta was about to die. This is T. This is T. Or as Portia might call it, it's peach juice. So I feel like they're definitely going to be filming. She's definitely going to be filming. And, and, and the shit is so messy that all you got to do is film them talking about her and then film her with Simon. Film her with Dennis. Film her and her family talking about how everybody responding to it. Like at the end of the day, they don't even have to interact for the first two, three episodes if they don't want to. But I'm sure they will. And everybody can say what they want to. But the show was on life support. And this just revived the fuck out of it. As messy as it is. Bravo better get Fallon on this damn show. Bravo better bring Fallon on this damn show. If you get Portia and Fallon in the same room at some point in, in season 14 of Real Housewives of Atlanta, bitch, that will be the most epic resurgence of a dying brand I have ever seen. <laughs> okay? Okay? Listen. I am so excited about Real Housewives of Atlanta, bitch, and I never thought that would happen. After this past season, I did not think that was going to happen. But even though this is so messy, y'all, I just want to say thank you for the super chat, Ty Sams. What is Drew going to do now that Portia has Delilah spirit? <laughs> Child, I don't know. You you attach yourself to that Delilah spirit, bitch. You was picking it up from the toy when really it was coming from right over here next to you for your good girl, Portia. Baby, I'm going to say this. This is messy. It's fucked up. But I have already told y'all that I would never consider Portia someone that you could be a genuine friend with. I feel like I've already said that, that Portia, especially on the show, like it's already been shown to me that everybody does what is in their best interest. OK, this is messy as fuck. But ultimately, you guys, the positives low key outweigh the ne negatives for me because I don't know Fallon. I don't know her. <laughs> we saw her a couple of times, but I don't have no relationship with this bitch. Yes, Portia, I am disappointed in, in, in the fact that you could not go and find you a better looking rich man, that you couldn't go and find you a man that was not already connected to y'all cast in some way. Like that's so fucking messy. And I do feel like you could have found any man and this is the one you decided to be with. Like, really? It just you could have done better on so many levels and this is what you decided to do bitch but at the same time i don't know fallon they they are getting a divorce word on the curb is that fallon cheated on him first <laughs> okay so i'm not about to feel bad on fallon's behalf because girl that probably was a blessing for you to get your little check and go on and move on from him I would want him laying on top of me to do my do his business on me every night. Shout out to Roxanne in the color purple. I don't want him laying on me, giving me his worm. So if Portia wants that, you know, grandpappy looking ass nigga to be laying on top of her doing his business for that good old check, that's her business. I don't care about nobody else cooch to that extent. But what I am going to say about positives I weigh in negatives is there are 20. Once again, thank you. <laughs> okay and then real housewives of atlanta everybody is going to be running to their tvs and then to youtube to see me review it thereafter so i'm sorry i'm always gonna look at things from the real and from for the real for me it's it this has tea to a very dry couple of weeks thank you Cause it's been dry out here and bitch, you just knocked over a whole tea kettle and just then drenched all the flow in the kitchen, bitch. This is ridiculous. I cannot believe this girl announced an engagement to this nigga in that moo moo looking pregnant by this old grandpappy ass man who girl, you went to that lady house. You was eating that lady 
food and now you engaged to that lady husband and Dennis is standing on the side of you looking dumb. And the only reason Dennis looked dumb is because I feel like he, somebody said, Dennis was smiling in them pictures because he knew that they were going to drag this shit out of Portia and all he needed to do was stand back and be a good guy and all of what he wanted to say to her would be said by millions of people and he would not have to say a word or receive the negative backlash, okay? That is true. I am more than sure that that man knew everybody was going to go off on her ass and he was just like, child, I don't even have to say nothing because everybody else is going to do it for me. But I'm going to say this. I do think it's nice that we put our bullshit aside for the kids. I'm sorry, y'all. I do think it's nice that we put our bullshit aside for baby PJ. Okay. Um, and uh, Negatives outweigh positive spiritually. Oh, we're, we're talking about spiritually. Oh, are we? Are we talking about spiritually Amber White? Oh, okay. I don't have a spiritual attachment to shit that ain't got nothing to do with me. So... <laughs> You going to get my standpoint as a YouTuber. You think I give a fuck about Portia and, and, and that man and that like that ain't got nothing to do with me, ma'am. That ain't got nothing to do with my spirit. OK, so my spirit is positive. OK, because that ain't got nothing to do with me. OK, uh, what would be hilarious is if her and Fallon actually became friends because of this. Thank you for the super chat, G Smith, and I would pass the fuck out. But I also feel like if Fallon really wanted to be on Real Housewives of Atlanta and get her check, I believe that it would be in everybody's best interest. Somehow. Somehow. Who did who all didn't like the post though? That speaks volumes. Child, I would like to know. Thank you, April, for the super chat. I mean, it's wrong. It's fucked up, but I'm not friends with Portia. <laughs> Lady J, I would love to be in Candy group text right now, baby. Uh -uh, I don't want to be in. I'm in Candy's uh group text, uh, you know, cause her, she got her little group thing. No, bitch, I want to be a fly on the wall when it came out. They go tell us. Yeah, look at the coma. <laughs> Child Candy probably somewhere laughing her ass off. Thank you, Chanel Brown, for the super chat, love. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Scholarly Talk on Life. This knock down the door and smack your chick worthy. Just trifling. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if it were not for the fact that then people already, you know, the divorce is happening. It's already, it, it'd be different if they was in the same, you know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be different if they were together and we found out, Okay. But ultimately, I just kind of feel like Fallon, girl, collect your little check and be grateful that he ain't got to lay on top of you and do his business on you no more. Let Portia go ahead and take that belly weight on her back, okay? All sweating and shit on, on the belly and then put the cold sweat belly on your back after he finished doing his business on you, <laughs> okay? Oh, oh, I, 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 I just meant overall. Oh, all right. But that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm not going to speak on something, you know, from a spiritual standpoint when it comes to this mess, because that ain't got nothing to do with my spirit. I can't speak on your spirit, bitch. OK, um, I just can't. Uh, if Portia think this will last, she's crazy. How many? Why? Oh, for sure. Super chat. Thank you, uh, Katina Gray. I thank you for that. Um, and then I'm so glad you said that, because that was my other point that I do not think it will last. And if they actually get married, I will be surprised. If they actually get married, I will be surprised. I think human code goes beyond just avoiding your homegirl's men. I think it's messed up to tip over to someone's house multiple times and end up planning all new decor with them X months later. It is. I don't disagree. I do not disagree, y'all, but I'm just flabbergasted, y'all. I'm flabbergasted. And if she's pregnant, this relationship was definitely going on for longer than a month. I just don't understand why. I mean, she must be happy with this nigga. She must be ecstatic to be with this nigga if she is willing to take this type of backlash because the backlash is not going to stop. It's just not. I almost feel like this is low key on the same level as the shit you did to Candy. I mean, it was worse because you tried to make it seem like Candy was Miss Raper Girl or something like that. But at the same time, 
this shit is just as fucked up public eye wise. Like people are going to be looking at you like you crazy, but it definitely will revitalize Real Housewives of Atlanta if they get Fallon on the show. And if y'all act like y'all not excited to see that shit, y'all a motherfucking lie. Bondi, do you think Portia will sign her season 14 contract? Bravo needs to lay out the red carpet so she can film this. I believe so. I think she would absolutely sign the contract. And I think all of this is a way to get a bigger check. I think all of this is a way to get a bigger check. Just like we saying it right here. Just like we're talking about this right here. Them executives are talking about how they're going to set up next season and what needs to happen. Because this just bumped them. They just bumped them up, okay? Girl. <laughs> Bitch, I am Sheree. <laughs> I am Sheree on this T, y'all. I am Sheree on this T. I just want y'all to know, y'all ain't never got to worry about me fucking your man as a friend. I'm not, I'm not the type. I'm, I'm definitely not the type. But I, I also feel like, I have seen because I grew up with, you know, OK, when you grow up dating women, specifically in high school, college, a lot of the girls circle each other because you'll be in a clique of friends of lesbians. OK, and these two go together, these two go to these, you know, everybody's kicking and hanging out. And then eventually somebody's going to cheat with somebody. They're going to break up. They're going to determine we still going to be friends. But then, you know, this person, a new person comes in. Now this person out and this person dating this person. So I have already been around situations where people swap girlfriends and you know and all of that type of shit i've definitely seen that and let's not forget that lyrics girlfriend before me thought that lyric and i were in a relationship prior to when we were because they had just broken up maybe two months before me and lyric started talking me and lyric were already friends that girl had come to my house and kicked it with me and my boyfriend at the time and Lyric and her at the time. I had actually been friends with Lyric through a couple of his relationships. Um, so that wasn't the only relationship that I had seen him in. But when she found out that me and Lyric were together, she thought that me and him must have been fucking around when they were going together. And it was like, no. First of all, y'all live in Baton Rouge. <laughs> okay. So no. I'm not sneaky linking with a nigga in Baton Rouge. That's just not happening. I also would never play second fiddle. Like that's extremely difficult for me to deal with. All right. So if I'm fucking with, you know, this man and now he my man, you better believe that I didn't come into this, sec you know, this situation being no, no dip. <laughs> I ain't no dip. I don't care. Portia will have to catch a fade for real. Simon too. How Dennis gonna let him smash homie BM? You know why? Because it's about the money. Dennis is getting something uh, uh, financially out of this situation for sure. Um, I also feel like, you know, they may have to catch a fade, but not in front Lil PJ. And Lil PJ was there. Okay. I believe somebody was about to air them out. That's why she had to come clean. I, I, I probably, this is why I think she pregnant. <laughs> like she may not be, but I'm just saying y'all, I have, you know, this situation is bad, but I've also been around people who do these types of things. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like, you know, I don't think Fallon and Portia were friends for real, but don't forget she cheated on the husband. Thank you, Teresa Jack for that super chat. That's why I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, it's unfortunate it's messy but we know that fallon and, and portia weren't really friends people say they're friends so that they can get them on the show y'all we all really know that you know what i'm saying so we'll, we'll have that into consideration but this shit is still too close for home for me <laughs> how many times has simon been married i don't know probably probably about twice before twice two or three times probably this this would probably be his third or fourth marriage um, I don't think that, you know, they'll really get married. If they do, like I said, I'll be surprised. Uh, thank you, Tasha McDonald. Portia is desperate uh, for a certain type of lifestyle, which is more important than a reputation. She has never been loyal on that show. She gets a pass because she's pretty and has a fun personality. Absolutely. I agree with that. She definitely gets a pass because she's pretty with a fun personality. Um, I do think that she's after a certain type of lifestyle, which I cannot be mad at her for, but I have, you know, more respect 
for the fact that I felt like she was trying to get that lifestyle on her own and not through a man. And even though Simon has money, Portia has money too. Portia not broke as far as we know. You know what I'm saying? So I, I do kind of wonder what are the dynamics in this relationship and what boxes are we talking about, bitch? Okay, big stomach, big wallet, big dick, big booty, big smile. Okay, like that, that's all the boxes apparently that could be checked. Thank you for the super chat, love. Um, I, I, I'm disappointed in Portia, but I also feel like she must be done with social justice, puss. She must be done being, you know, in social justice. Um, she probably going to do things, but she's not going to be able to be like a face or a spearhead. That time has come and passed. And in all honesty, this seems like a way to step away from that <laughs> and, and kind of push yourself away from the table. Like no longer social justice, puss. I am engaged and probably pregnant for a girl I said was my friend's ex-husband. And he's not even an ex yet, bitch. Like, social justice puss is out the door. Portia still working on Dish Nation? Yes. Yes, she is. She actually teased this story on Dish Nation yesterday. Um, You think Fallon put P on? Like, look, I'm divorcing him, but you need to slide in and get what you can get. Tony Joe, that is an excellent point. And I would not be surprised because... Y'all, Fallon had to know about this when she did the speak on it. And she did not act like she was mad at Portia. Now, they no longer follow each other on social media. But it could really be some, girl, I don't want him no more. Do you want him? Come get him. Make sure you come before some other girl come in and slide in. But he'll give you a nice little settlement if y'all divorce. Okay? That's, you get you a prenup straight off rip. And you can get you a nice little payday on the back end. And don't mention if you have a baby fund, bitch. Okay? These girls can be running these old niggas for their money. That is definitely a possibility. Thank you, Panda 3031, for the super chat. Hey, Bondi, this has to be a stunt. I will hope that Portia is not. Oh, no, she's she's that messy. She's that messy. I think the thing with Candy proved that she's that messy. Even if Fallon was just a co-worker, it's so unnecessary. I believe so. I, I feel like there are so many men out there. I don't know why she had to come and shit what she ate. It, it wasn't necessary. Enjoy you so much, birthday twin. And I DM'd you on egg and wanted you to remember my name, Kiki Culture. All right. Thank you so much, Kiki, for the super chat. I'm going to go and uh, check my DMs when I get up off of here because y'all know I have another video uh, right after this. And we're going to be talking about Black Ink Crew and because, child, it's a mess over there. Uh, VH1 Couples Therapy, a mess. The episode was really good, y'all, of Couples Therapy. They had a medium come on and she read everybody the fuck down. And we also talk about Married to Medicine. OK, so y'all make sure y'all come and see me over there fallon was probably the portia before they married uh she probably was thank you ll for the super chat she probably was a lot of these young girls it'd be real recognized real you know what i'm saying game recognized game thank you chanel brown for the super chat i appreciate you thank you brian patterson for the super chat i love the way you look for the positives bondy season 14 of real housewives of atlanta is going to be crazy portia will probably become the highest paid housewife probably but I'm going to just mention this and thank you. I try. But I want to mention that she's not the first housewife to come on being the other woman that married somebody else's husband. OK, um, it, it probably won't be the first time or the last time that it happens. And as much as this is messy as fuck, y'all shit happen like this every day. B. Y'all do not watch Divorce Court and Paternity Court and and <clears throat> all them other shows, Jerry Springer and Maury. Y'all watch that shit. Y'all can act like Portia, you know, is the first person y'all didn't see do some nasty shit like this. But y'all know these hoes is out here. These hoes is hoes. <laughs> Child, if she happy, that's her business. But couldn't be me. Wouldn't be me. And if it was my ex-husband and I and I had you at my house, bitch, I ain't gonna. I probably wouldn't be trying to fight you because I'm one of them people that feel like I'm not about to get myself upset over some shit that don't matter to me no more. If I'm divorcing that nigga, then he don't matter to me in that way anymore. And you're not going to get that response out of me. As, I'm just as a grown woman. If I was in Fallon's position, oh, you know, catch a fade. Yeah, that shit cute to stay online. But the truth of the matter is, if I'm divorcing you, nigga, you my old weight and she can have you. <laughs> you she my old weight. I mean, he my old weight. And that bitch can have you. I'm going to take my check and I'm going to move on and find me an, another rich man to be with that probably look better than him. Hopefully with a six pack so his wet, sweaty stomach don't be smacking up against mine talking about doing a business on a bitch giving her worms. OK. Um, <clears throat> but I, I'm just letting y'all know, you know what I'm saying? Because. It is what it is at this point, you know what I'm saying? 
you can say it's about disrespect. You can. But I also feel like Portia and Dennis, like it's one of those situations where it's going to be karma. Ain't no reason to even upset yourself about like if I was failing, I would have been like, checkmate, bitch. You raggedy ass bitch. Checkmate. <laughs> I talk about you like a dog, bitch. I dog walk you online and everything else. But I ain't about to fight you. I'm not about to lower myself for what? For a nigga I don't care about no more? <laughs> Bye. Go and fuck that old ass nigga. I'm done. I've had enough. Okay. Chantel Cunningham, thank you so much for the super chat. She better be careful before her next baby look like the daddy. You know it was a problem when they say PG <laughs> PJ look like Dennis. <laughs> Child, that baby look just like Portia. Beautiful. But you know that's true though. Okay. Wow, Portia move fast like J-Lo. Child, y'all seen J-Lo supposedly is, is dating Ben Affleck again. I said, mm. Circle back around then, won't you? Circle back around. I'm going to tell y'all, though, I think we definitely get things later. Like, I think people, y'all be thinking people that moved on so quickly and really there was a time frame where we didn't know what was going on and it was going on. I definitely feel like that about this situation. But I am wondering if tea will spill from other people's mouths as time goes on, i.e. Fallon, i.e. Dennis. Um, everybody's keeping it cute and professional. But I am definitely wondering what's going to happen as far as what everybody else is going to have to say about this situation. Because, you know, people who don't like Portia, yeah, they might have been the first ones to make a comment. But people who do like her, that shit might take a little longer, but it might eventually come and spill on the table. Because most people probably feel like this is some shady ass shit for you to do. For sure. Okay? Going to be fist bumping a nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you rub your ass on him later on. Let me tell you something. Plot twist. Fallon started dating Dennis for season 14. Bitch, if that happens, we're all going to pass out on the floor. <laughs> we're all going to pass out on the floor if that happens. OK. Uh, Bondi just said she had a situation where her husband with how they met and got together, how Portia allegedly got with Simon and y'all real selective giving him. Oh, yeah. listen, there's a difference, though. OK, there is a difference. Me and her were not friends. OK, we were cool. We had hung out together, but she was not my friend. He was my friend. OK, first of all. Second of all, they were broken up. We were all in college. They were not married. <laughs> OK, they were not married. I think it's so funny when people try to compare marriages to boyfriend, girlfriend shit. It is not the same. OK, it is not the same. All right. But, um, you know, if you think those two situations are the same, then that's fine. I really don't give a fuck. I've been with this nigga for a decade. <laughs> and that girl then went on and got married and had children and living her life. So if y'all think that any of us are out here with bad spiritual energy because of it, uh, not really. <laughs> not really. Okay. But uh, our situations were different. I just want to say that. The Real Housewives of New Jersey cash share men all the time. Thank you, LL, for the super chat. And you know I don't watch them white ladies, but yes, I know it happens. I know it happens. Because it happens in real life all the time. All the time. And people act like it doesn't. Thank you. Dating is different than marriage. Fallon should stay classy, stay quiet, stay above the drama. Although she cheated on her husband, maybe Fallon cheated because she knew Simon was screwing Portia. Cheating is never right. Divorce. It's not. It's not. It really is. Um, and that just goes to show that both people were probably done with the marriage before the marriage was over. It happens. Uh, Queen Christine, thank you for the super chat. I don't think Portia owed Fallon anything, but this relationship absolutely could have waited. No reason to pounce before things are finalized. I agree with that. I agree. I, you know, I don't necessarily view Portia and that girl as real friends. I don't. And I do feel like time should have been given because the the ink on the paper, bitch, the, the divorce is not even finalized yet. So, yeah, I definitely feel like it could have waited. But if it was happening already, it was happening already. You know what I'm saying? So the time, the time frame would only be so we didn't think less of them, but they were already fucking. So it really don't even make a difference. Um, we don't know if Portia is pregnant, but that's what everybody is speculating based off of the clothing she was wearing for the Mother's Day situation. Uh, speaking positively about Simon and Portia, she didn't know. You think she didn't know? If they've been dating for a month now, 
You think she didn't know? If people are already DMing other people about this shit, you think Fallon didn't know? I don't know. I don't know, y'all. My cash app is at the bottom of the screen, love. You think they move into Africa? Child, I'm sure they'll get a property there. Maybe next to Naomi Campbell. <laughs> the Kardashians did it all the time. It's not for me. Yeah, no, no, no. People definitely do it all the time. It is definitely not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, my situation, your situation is different, Bondi. I do feel dating and marriage are close in kinship. I respect relationship, but you didn't cheat with your friends, man. Different. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> they were broken up and had been for two months, okay? He came over and it just so happened that that was the moment that I started to look at him differently. Like, you know, I was like, so they over, over? And they was like, yeah, they over, over. It's been like a minute. I was like, oh, all right then. And then we started today. <laughs> and honestly anybody can feel however the fuck they want to feel about it i really don't care uh it's my husband so like what are we gonna do we're gonna fight about the nigga that married me anyway uh if you watch the video of her dancing the social ball on mother's day you will see that she cuffs her stomach twice waiting on this pregnancy announcement y'all oh yeah oh yeah i saw it i saw it <laughs> i saw it okay marlo knew I and I think Marlo knew because Marlo kept saying that she could have I could spray you for real and she never did. Marlo should have sprayed that hoe. <laughs> but everybody keeping it cute because they won't get back on the show. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to get their check on this show, y'all. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope y'all enjoyed all the tea that was spilled today. And I hope that y'all come back for the BBS reality show edition so we can talk about uh, Married to Medicine, Black Ink Crew, and uh, VH1 uh, Couples Retreat. So thank y'all so much for the super chat, for supporting the channel, for coming through. Y'all really showed out today, probably the most people I've ever had in my life. So thank y'all so much for coming to see me. I love y'all. Y'all have a good day. And I hope to see y'all in a few.